Yeah. Okay, so for those who don't care about following KR, the latest patch notes are splitting up with the tooltips or PvE and PvP. Now this is like a godsend, like way too fucking late for PvP. It actually shows a really hella major issue with PvE. Namely them huge ass damage nerfs that are coming to like almost everything. Shit, on paper it sounds pretty cool, but when you realize that the endgame was made and scaled off of the whale's ability to speed run with their plus 11s and a general damage nerf really messes with the average gear players in the plus 7 and 9 range, and maybe a few of those who run plus 10. Non endgame bosses with insane HP like Solas go from being a 10 minute boss to the average gear team being a 15 20 minute run to that's just a boss to like fucking. 30 minutes or some shit, like I don't know what the fuck they're doing. Never mind all the incredibly buggy and unfair mechanics to that boss fight that makes it incredibly long for no fucking reason, but uh, you know. Okay, I mean it's not like a gear wall for PvE is exactly a bad thing, it means you keep updating your gear as you progress through the story. The problem with this however is the way the game does it. You have this recommended item level and logically, if you follow it, you should not have any trouble passing any gear check in a game, right? Well, no. The recommended is also the minimum, and the game is not catered to its minimum or its average. This works against the casual players who follow it as a baseline as a maybe it's time to take off this Altera gear in Velder and put on some Velder gear before I keep going. What it actually does is stop people from leeching parties with a Kobo EXP weapon. And even then it fails to do that because you can just change your gear mid-dungeon. Further in the story you go, the higher item level gets, right? Okay, it sounds good on paper, but then you realize the game is still not scaled to it. For example, if you look at 10-1 in Elysion, the item level is... Shit, what is the item level? I think it's like 70-something? 70-80-something? It's not, it's not like actual the actual level or whatever, but anyway, I'm just gonna spitball numbers because it actually is kind of like this. If you go into 10-1's Elysion and you look at the item level, the item level is fairly low. Let's just say you and your party go in with the recommended item level, and let's just say your item level is, uh... Maybe 5 or 10 levels above or below, well it can't be below because it won't let you party, but if it's like 5 or 10 levels above, let's say that much, you're probably going to struggle a little bit. Why is this? I have no idea. Actually I do. It's because of the insane HP soak that all the bosses at this point on have, which kind of started back at the end of Sander. But the point is, the AI is kind of, a lot of it has been nerfed to the point where it's not really a big issue anymore because the AI is so bad. The only way to really die in these levels is to play so horribly that you actually take a hit. Sometimes you take one hit and it just does 100% of your HP because that's just the way Elysian works now for some reason. It's like, that's very fair mechanics you got there, science to call. I'm totally not gonna question them at all. Alright, so then the further along Elysian get, you realize it's, well, it's supposed to be like the end game of like the story, right? So uh, let's say we go all, we make it all the way to 10-6. You notice the item level is still not very high. So, okay, what do you do? You say you want to go in around with the current item level. Well, buddy, you fucked up. Let me tell you why. Take a look at my item level here. Now take a look at the item level for this dungeon. Sounds like it's gonna be a breeze, right? <laughs> Since we're near the end of the main story, the boss is supposed to actually put up a fight. This is okay and all, but the main problem is how much HP he has and some of the mechanics. If you look at all the end of the story bosses from any other game, even some of their like um raids or secret dungeons or whatever you have, they tend to keep their HP thresholds fairly high, but it's not like a Let's take 10 minutes to kill in an average party and 20 minutes to solo. Quickest example I can think of off, off the top of my head is PSO2. Like if you take a look at like most EQ bosses or whatever, like 5 minutes in like a good party, pugs will probably drop you to 20 minutes if they're really, really bad. And that's them playing 20 minutes because they're playing poorly not because of a gear check or whatever. Because most of the gear in this game is uh, not incredibly difficult to get. But like top of the line gear, you're running like five minutes. Average party, average gear, 10 minutes. And that's for like the whole level. That's pretty average, right? Especially for MMOs. That's like that's like kind of the acceptable baseline as far as uh, party length goes. There might be exceptions here and there, but if you look at other games like Dragoness, or you look like Blade and Soul, or you even look at like Vindictive, average party times for levels, even like in the end game, are not 
incredibly long. Not not something like 20, 30 minutes just because the boss decided, uh, I know you totally passed that judgment and all, but uh, I'm just gonna debuff you anyway so you can do no damage. And the kind of shit like that. And then you have all these mechanics in the L Sword that actively punish solo play. Which is one of those really things that just piss me off. You're like, it's one thing to encourage party play, give them all these incentives, but on the other hand, like, it kind of sucks when you realize that if you're an average player, like, average gear, and you're gonna, like, try to, and you're just gonna go for a solo play, you're gonna have a pretty hard time, and it's probably not gonna be fun depending on what you're doing. 10-6 is definitely a prime example of that because of how long the stage is. I played on, like, a class that's good for bossing, like, Dimension Wedge, but could you imagine trying to solo that shit on something like Wind Sneaker? Like... That has to be a fucking nightmare, holy shit. Actually, I think I might go ahead and try that just to prove our damn point. Now, the simple solution is to just nerf the HP and make sure the boss works as intended and possibly change a few things like him instantly grabbing a sheaf on that particular phase and lowering the HP of each sheaf so that they can be destroyed in a reasonable way for average player. And that's just for Solus 1. Solus 2, the actual final boss in the game, actually feels like a final boss. He plays like a final boss and... For the most part, he's actually pretty balanced as far as his heavy difficulty goes and how his HP is. He feels like a final boss and that's pretty good. He's pretty fair and doesn't really have too much bullshit. Well, mostly not bull. But the clear signs are reasonable and so is the gear you need, so it doesn't feel like a proper so it does definitely feel like a proper final boss. Which I think I'm gonna stop talking about Solus in general and just kinda go over like the bosses in general, and like what's wrong with them. Like if you just look at them, a lot of them need a serious tune-up. For what's supposed to be a fast-paced action game, they kind of move like snails with salt being poured onto them. And I don't mean that salt in PvP, my nigga. Now, up until a point you reach Elysian, and even some of the secret dungeons, pretty much every boss just kind of tickles, and if for some reason you actually get hit, there's really no consequence. Some of the bosses actually have some cool ideas, but most of them, but most people will never see them because everything from 95% of the game has paper for HP. Maybe like five or six bosses with, that just sit there with like a million HP and do nothing. Now, heroic difficulty and inner challenge was a good idea to fix some of this in a sense, but it also has a major problem. But it also addresses another major problem for L, and that's the fact that things take a million HP for no reason, where even plus tens and plus elevens are taking a long time. And that's specifically for Heroic Dungeon. If you run a plus 10, plus 11 in Hero Challenge, there is no challenge. Like, they removed the challenge from Hero Challenge the moment they decided that gear mattered again. Like, that's one thing they should definitely fix, and that's most certainly one thing that I think a lot of older players will agree on. Hero Challenge should go back to having scaled gear. Like, it's one of the things that made the bosses interesting, and you really got to see a lot of their mechanics, even if some of them were a little, uh... Yeah, but the point is, that's just one really major thing about the bosses in this game. Your weapon enhancements don't matter. Like, let me explain it. It's Your weapon enhancements don't matter. Your sockets are kind of, like, important, but they're not, like, the end-all, be-all thing. Say it. Like, I don't know how many people here actually remember the old Hinner challenge. Or, like, Gates of Darkness or whatever. But, it, like, kind of like that. Like, it definitely makes things easier to scale for difficulty. Because... You have a set HP for each character, set HP for bosses, set HP for everything, and set damage for everything. Well, mostly, unless you, you know, socket things. So, uh, it, just it, it just really bothers me that they did this in her challenge. It's like, okay, let's just take what little challenge the game had and made it into another gear wall, but this time with no potions. Ha ha ha, so original and cool, right guys? <laughs> right? Speaking of scaled gear, there should be a lot more content that honestly does this. And I think that's one of the things in this game that used to provide a legitimate challenge, and that was the original Gates of Darkness. Both versions 1 and 2 were legitimately challenging tower defense mini-games. But in the current in the current version, it's just kind of monsters just run at you with no difficulty that just die to you pressing buttons. And if you run it by yourself, it's even easier because you can literally sit there do nothing, AFK, go grab yourself a fucking coffee, come back and the dungeon's been done for you because if you solo it, the game will spawn three epic NPCs behind you. So they'll pretty much solo the entire dungeon for you, which it's kind of hard to call it a dungeon. It's also dictated by RNG because you can only access it at the end of a dungeon randomly, 
which was another really stupid idea. A lot of the AI in this game really needs to be uh, reworked. Like for this game, a lot of the, a lot of times they think more HP just means harder. Haha. <laughs> Honestly, the only boss that seems to be immune to this is the actual boss with an actual AI, and that's Secret Dungeon Altera Type H. The only time this game actually provides a legitimately hard but fair challenge. I mean, yeah, spore healing can be fixed to not be as insane as it is, and the statement was to be 100% true, but even then, you play the, you play the boss right, and like you can stop the spores completely, and you'll never take force damage on like, both versions of Solace. This next part is made, not really a major problem, but it's more of a minor one, and it's honestly more of a personal one, Like, but if you play a lot of games, it like it, you might kind of agree with this, and it's how they handle the music in this game. It does this like this really weird tendency to reuse boss music on stages where it doesn't really fit. This is a primary example because a lot of times the music they use isn't really kind of like the catch-all kind of boss music. Like you have boss music in other video games where it's like this is like the boss theme, and this is like this for like every boss outside of maybe event bosses and a final boss and some extra side bosses or whatever. All right, so that's kind of how you would think about it, right? Okay, so give an example. Like a good example of this is Hamill's last boss. Okay, so the first time you hear this music is when you fight Ra, and it sounds pretty great, right? So you're like, okay, so this is like Ron's theme, I guess, since he's supposed to be like a special boss or whatever. He's like a specific part, a major part in the story, so he gets his own boss theme, right? Cool. So why is it also used on Clanio's stage or whatever? How the fuck you pronounce it? Why do they reuse it over here on this, on the next region's boss, and not the first boss, but like the second one? Like it's and it, and it's actually kind of apparent. Like if you look at things like uh, the first time you hear uh, the music for uh, the Altera Chorus boss for the Nasala King, right? Gets his own theme. Pretty cool. Pretty epic. And then they just kind of start reusing it over and over throughout the game later on, and it kind of loses its impact like a lot. It's the kind of musical dissonance that feels bad because when they score certain music for certain stages and they keep using it throughout other reasons, it's kind of weird. Like for example, if you look at the boss theme for Hamill, if you go to stage 1 all the way up until you fight Magsama, it's the same boss theme. This is thematically okay and I think that's uh, one of the things that Elsor should really try to focus on doing unless you're gonna score different boss teams you know for every other new character they feel like putting it kind of like how they do for stages but they don't have to do that it's a lot easier to just make one boss team for every like region like this is the boss team you're gonna hear for this particular region like other than maybe the final boss in that region right like the prime example of this is if you go to the final stage of Fieta and you fight uh, the final boss there. He's one of the major points in the story, so he gets his own boss theme. Not only that, it's probably one of the best themes that they've ever used, and it's arguably the best song in the game. Now, think about where else have you heard them reuse that theme song? Nowhere. This is how it should be. Not only does that boss music stay associated with that particular endgame boss, but it keeps its charm because you're only gonna hear it that one time, and that's what makes it so special. Honestly, I just think they should arrange their music in a, uh, a more organized fashion. Okay, there's actually one more part I want to look at, and that's the stages themselves. A lot of them have over years lost most or all of their death due to them being shortened to a point where they barely exist now. Before, you had stages where split paths were a thing, and you had optional paths or whatever, and it actually looks really cool. Like, if you look at the old versions of, like, the underground waterway, there was, like, this really cool split path where you could send two players up and then two players down, and then they kind of converge on, like, a later part of that particular section of the stage, and that shit was really cool. Like, I wish they had did more of that because that really added some really nice aesthetic to the stage. Also, some of the transitions that got moved out are shortened. Some were good, and, like, I'm pretty sure everybody agrees that the second stage of Altera was way too fucking long. That was a good change. Like, that like that was fine, but then they had some things like shortening Reuben stages and Elder stages that were already really short to begin with, so you're just like, oh, it's just early game, oh, you know, it, it, it doesn't really matter, but actually kind of does, because, like, it takes away some of the immersion from the game, especially, especially in, like, 
early game stages like freaking underground chapel like that was my shit back in the day like dude let me tell you like just having that bottom path where you can speed run the middle path for like whatever it was just completely optional then you had the top path where like you go up there if you want to do a specific quest and that just really added another layer of depth to the game or at least in some of the stages some of them were bland but then they had these extra things it was just like the little things and they added things to the game that like really felt like a game eventually they took most of that stuff out then you have things like when it gets to the point of the fields were a mistake but then they just kind of cut back on some of the aesthetic to the point where it was like why are you even keeping fields in the first place if all you're gonna do is remove the majority of them but uh yeah i'm not cog so i can't really answer that for you now i feel like they may have gotten back to this like if you look at some of their newer stages in elysium like uh 10 5 like herberun's place like, they have these really cool platforming segments that are nice, but honestly, they're like the only, this is like the only time they do stuff like this. And it kind of shows because if you, if you take a random party of pugs with you and you realize that they can't do basic jumping over like these platforms or whatever and they keep dying to some of the most simple patterns, it shows how poorly thought out the entire game is because this is the first time a lot of these players are seeing things like this and it really sh and it just really messes with the flow of the game because they should have added more stuff like this early on and that would just made a more cohesive project and you'd have a lot less I guess you could say you'd have a lot less pugs dying to simple shit anyway I think that's all I wanted to go over uh there are I mean, overall, these are just kind of things I was spitballing off the top of my head. I mean, there's a few other things too, but this is just some of the uh, major points that I was thinking of about like what exactly is wrong with PVE and why do most people feel like it just doesn't exist because it's, it just it's just it's just a complete mess at this point. Like they had an idea of revamping things and. and revamping on old stuff that really didn't need it for real and then like i don't know they 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 lost their consistency somewhere and i'm not really sure where but elsword's less of an action platforming game action platforming fighting whatever fucking i don't know what well, it's less of a game and more of a chore because it's not like you're really enjoying the stages themselves or you're enjoying the bosses themselves it just kind of looks like a glorified mmo well actually it is an mmo but it doesn't have to have all this poorly thought out ideas there is like okay this is like a cool idea but they don't really do anything with it and even if they did it was like if you go in a party like you'll you'll see none of whatever effort they tried to put into in the first place Unlike before, like, I think this is one of the biggest things that pisses me off, and it's like, when I was running with, uh, I, I was doing BVE solo, and, like, I made it all the way up to, uh, the stage before last on Vieta. Okay, like, before you actually used to have to fight Cuddy Shark while he was down, like, you actually had to use the catapults on him to, like, knock him out of the sky, but... Now you can just press buttons and he'll die to skills. I mean, he doesn't ever have to fall even once. He can just he just floats near you now. He doesn't do all, he doesn't do all his flying around. He doesn't really do his patterns much anymore. And it really it really sucks, dude. <laughs> like what happened to this boss? This boss used to have difficulty. <laughs> it really it it really just and it's one of those things, it's present throughout the game, like, a lot of these bosses actually used to put up a fight, but now they don't, and it's like, they're all so forgettable now that it's just like, you just kind of realize that the game has no content because the game has no replayability unless you're, like, remaking characters, and the replayability isn't really you getting to enjoy the stages and the bosses again, it's you... Okay, I just gotta get to level 99 as quick as I can. That's why everything is horrible with PvE. <laughs> Alright guys, thanks for sticking around. If you like this and you want me to see you want me to do more, you know, like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. And you know what? I'll uh, see you guys in the next video. Kinda sorry if you guys are waiting for like troll PvP videos because 
one of the biggest issues I have right now is like kind of how it's kind of like how fucked up my real life is and kind of how fucked up my actual internet ability is. So it's like I kind of can't play the game correctly in a sense. I, it's kind of hard to describe, but yeah. The short answer is I don't have the internet to play PvP. And the long answer is I don't have the I don't have the internet to play PvP. I don't have the time to even play the game in general, honestly. Like I really just get time to make stuff out of meta, which is kind of what I'm doing right now, until the next time I can actually play again. So with that, uh, I'm going to leave, guys. Peace.